All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show. New head coach at Corpus Christi down there in the Southern Conference. Coach Steve Lutz from Purdue now down there with the Islanders. Coach, what's up, man? How you doing now? Man, just living my best life. You know, it's uh, it's day to day down here on this island. Got too much sun, too much beach. And I ain't even seen it because I've been up in this office. I hear you, man. Between you and Matt Figure down there, man, y'all living it up down there in South Texas, man. Y'all doing <laughs> y'all doing a thing down there, man. <laughs> man, I, I every time I keep talking to Fig, he, he keeps asking me about when we're going to play because we are going to play. But he he seems to have been uh, out of his office a little bit more than me. <laughs> Yes, he has. Yes, indeed. Well, Coach, you are a veteran of this conference, the Southland Conference here. Tell us about the opportunity to come back down to the conference you know very well. And, Coach, the honors here going forward. Oh, man, it's great. I mean, obviously, I'm happy to be back. Um, you know, for me, this was – this is where I grew up. I, you know, we came down here and we vacationed here when I was a little kid. So, like, for me, Corpus Christi, Port Aransas, all this – um, area coastal area down here it, it, it's big time you know and I don't know you know for me it's it's a realization obviously of a dream um, but it's also an opportunity to um, revitalize a program that absolutely should be the best if not one of the best in the Southland Conference um, we've got everything that we need here in order to be a perennial contender for the league title and to make NCAA tournament runs um, but, you know, that's, uh, that's what our task is right now. And, and we've got some, you know, Will, Coach Wilson did a great job in terms of setting a foundation. And we've got some good players returning. But we just need to add to the roster. Most definitely, Coach. Tell us about this, man. Having the alignment from the staff, the administration, the AD on down to you to give you everything you need to build this thing the right way and have the right guys in your program. That's how important it is to have that alignment as you try to build this thing being a first year head coach going forward? Yeah, there, there's no question. I mean, I would, you know, I've had opportunities to become a head coach previously, and, and I wouldn't have taken this job had uh, John Palumbo and Dr. Miller not been in 110% alignment. Um, you know, John came from VCU, we're very similar to here, you don't have football. So every, every decision is based around the men's basketball program, uh, first and foremost. So, I mean, that I had that same um, alignment at Creighton University when I was there, and it appealed to me, obviously, when looking at this job. But, you know, everything is here. I mean, we have plenty of resources. We've got a beautiful facility that seats 8,500 downtown, um, the, the entire athletic department from the AD to the strength coach, the academic person, they're all on board with men's basketball and making sure that it's the best possible program that it can be. Um, so it's a dream come true. Now we've just got to do our part and, and now go win some games. Hey, man, this Coach Lutz. Tell me this. When did you decide that you want to get into coaching, man? I know for, my dad's a coach, man, and, you know, for me, I wanted to be on the radio. I didn't want to be in the coach, going to coach in his route. So when did you decide you want to get into coaching, man? I mean, it's a little bit of a, a different story for me because, to be honest with you, when I'm in college and I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to go into business. And uh, if you're going to go into business, you've obviously got to be a really good math person. Oh, yeah. I'm not a great math person. So, like, I get into accounting 101 and 202, and I'm busting my tail just to, to get a B or a C. And I'm like, dang. And then the, you know, the, the advisor tells me, he goes like, you realize that you still got stats, managerial accounting, financial accounting. I'm like, man, I don't know if I could get this done, you know, and still uh, maintain all of my other grades plus play basketball. So I, it just was a natural, I don't want to say a fallback, but it was a natural progression for me because I had had such good mentors as, as a high school player. And then my college coach was a, a really good mentor as well. Um, it just was a natural fit for me to go, all right, well, I love basketball. I like athletics. How can I just stay involved in it? And then from there, you know, I got lucky and got a job. I hear that. And let's just uh, follow up this. How did you prepare to become a head coach? I know for you know, for me, I was a co-host. I was thinking about, if I was the host, I'll have on this guest or ask this question or this do it this way. So for you, you're an assistant coach. How did you kind of prepare yourself for this opportunity to become a head coach? Well, I was lucky because everybody that I worked for allowed me to have my hands in anything from scheduling to budgeting to discipline um, to the X's and O's, you know, um, so I was blessed in that regard. 
most recently, obviously, I, I came from Purdue and, and Coach Painter allowed me to run the entire defense, which, you know, I mean, essentially, you've got a practice plan every single day. Uh, you've got to make sure that you're ready to uh, have the, the next opponent scouted. You've got to have a game plan together. So from a defensive standpoint, you think is the head coach every single day. Um, and then at other institutions, you know, I was obviously able to be involved in all of it. So I got to be involved in the offense as well. But you have to just walk into the office every day as an assistant coach thinking, OK, this is my program, even though it's not your program. You have to think along those lines and say, OK, this is my program. How would I want it to look? How would I what would I want to do today? What would I want to get accomplished today? And when you do that, you, you do all of the tasks that are necessary on a daily basis and it takes stuff off your head coach's plate, right? So my goal as an assistant coach always to knock out everything before my head coach walked into the office and was like, hey man, have you done this, this, and this? So that obviously prepares you to become the head coach in my opinion. Most definitely. And how's it been uh, meeting with your, your players, man? I know you're a new guy, guy in town, man. Guys are kind of weary of you. So how's it been building that rapport relationship with your, your players you have now coming back on your roster and the guys in the portal as well? You know, it, it's been very interesting, to be honest with you. Um, these young men, and again, I said this earlier, Coach Wilson and his, his staff have done a great job of, of having good kids and, and good players here. Um, and so there was a pretty good culture, right? And so those guys um, were accepting of me for the most part. You know, there were several that were already in the transfer portal. But, uh, I, you know, once I got here and started working out with three or four that, that weren't in the portal, well, then the word spreads to the other guys like, hey, man, this, our, this guy's all right. And so now you got guys wanting to come out of the portal. But, I mean, let's be honest with COVID and everything that has gone on, on over the last year, year and a half maybe, these guys um, are just in such a time of uncertainty. Oh, so, yes. you know, from the day I walked onto campus, uh, those that, that wanted to stay and I felt were good fits for me in, in the program moving forward, you just have to kind of recruit them just like you're recruiting guys for the new, for, you know, the new guys for the roster. Um, so, but really it comes down to the, I was really lucky and blessed because coach Wilson had, you know, good kids here already. And coach this year is going to be good because they, they'll be able to come back for the summertime and work out with you. Last year, you couldn't work out your guys till you saw them. You don't know what guys are coming back, how kind of shape they're in, whether they've been working on their games or not. So this year you can actually have skill, skill development, player development this summer, get them stronger and build and get them more immersed in your system as you get ready for October and things tip off here. Yeah, and that's how you build relationships, right? With basketball players, especially, they want you to get into the gym with them and they want you to sweat with them. They want you to work with them. Um, that's how you build trust up. And, uh, you know, I had my press conference at uh, 3.30 on a Thursday. What, well, 7 o'clock Friday morning, I had guys in the gym and we had workouts. And then, obviously, I got about three weeks of work with them as well after that. So I, I can't tell you how excited I am for June 14th to roll around when we have hopefully everybody here and we can start working with them. Um, because like, like you say, I mean, it's, it's, it was such a different time last summer and this will give us the chance to start building for the future. I guess it's amazing that guys play well as they did, not have been around their coaches all summer long, coming back at different times. Because I'm like, for me, when I played, I, I, I had to get my reps in. I couldn't, I needed that structure. I couldn't do it without just on my own. So not having that structure for me would have been hard. So a lot of them guys who came out and played, and a lot of guys got hurt because they, they don't know what they was doing. Soft tissue injuries lingered all year long. So I'm, I'm glad for young men this year and coaches as well. You guys can actually have getting people stronger. Well, of what else? Injuries, injuries was terrible this year in NBA and in college basketball as well. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And, you know, again, it just it allows you to start and get your culture set, get your defensive mm -hmm. set, get your offense set. Um, and, 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 you know, it just gives you a leg up. But for those guys, too, it, it's like you say, man, they just want to get back in the gym. They want normalcy and uh, they want to always, you know, as a player, you should always be thinking, hey, I want to get better at this, this and this. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and that's what they want. That's exactly what they want. So, I'm excited. I mean, I've obviously got a lot of work to do with my roster moving forward and, and fill in some holes. But to be able to get those guys here in June and, and get to work with them all of June and July and a little bit of August, um, boy, it's going to be great. And especially now with the revamps 
conference you guys have now. Guys are moving to the WAC now. The conference getting revamped now, so it's more. It's gonna be more competitive, even more competitive in Texas now to get players. So talk about that as well, Coach. And also, being in Corpus Christi, a great town, great weather. Guys who want to come there and play. How <laughs> yeah. <I> would. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's funny you say that. For me, as as the head coach and our staff, we've got to balance those the 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 guys between those that want to just kind of come to the beach and hang out a little bit and not spend enough time in the gym versus, you know, guys that are hard workers. But, and I tell all these guys, like, if you come to school here, I'm going to work you really, really hard. Like I'm going to coach you hard. My staff's going to work you hard. Um, and we're going to have fun while we do it. And then when you're done with basketball, like, Hey, if you want to walk a hundred yards across the street and go sit down on the beach and hang out for a little bit, man, good for you. But you've just got to find a good balance between the two guys that, that are gym rats, that are hard workers, that are ballers, and then guys that also understand the perspective of, OK, hey, I can, you know, I can go down the street and, and I can go have dinner right on the water and, and enjoy a little live music and then, you know, come back and finish up on my studies or, or go back to the gym again that night. Oh, so I got two more for you, man. <laughs> what is your favorite eating spot here in, in Atlanta, man, when you come here to recruit and, and play here? Oh, it's not even close. It's spun divots over there by the uh, by the airport. Yes, my man. Yes, I uh, love yeah, that place. It's, it's either that. Now, I like the varsity, too, just because it's the varsity, you know, the one over by Georgia Tech. But spun yeah. divots is my spot. I love that place. Does the varsity me don't agree, man? I, I can't ever eat. I can't eat that stuff, man. That stuff ain't good. I got for you. Me. That's like that's, that's one spot in town I can't. The varsity I can't do it. Never have as a child, man. I don't know. As a child coach, I couldn't. No, can't do it. Never have. <laughs> Never have. <laughs> the last one for you is this, coach. What's your favorite moment here in Atlanta? Whether you be coming for the final four, playing here against a team, What's your favorite moment here, man. Oh man, my favorite moment. I don't know that I, I really, I mean, obviously we all like the final four um, and, and that's a great, great time. I don't know that I've spent enough time there to have really a favorite moment, to be very honest with you. Um, you know, I guess maybe when Mike Budenholzer was the coach of the Hawks, I came and spent some time with him because he's a good friend. Uh, but really, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I got you on that one. Gotcha. Hey, you know, so tell us about Bud. You know, I, I miss Bud. He's a good guy. I miss him. He's not the Bud. Tell us about Bud. Because he, he, he was here, man. He coached up really, really, really well. And his staff was very good as well. Yeah, no, no. I mean, obviously, he's a, he's a very good coach. He's a good friend. Um, you know, he and I started at the very bottom together. So, like, when I'm coaching as a graduate assistant at Incarnate Word, the Spurs have all of their basketball camps there all summer. Well, at that point, there was a guy named Reed Martinka. He was the head video guy, and Bud was the second video guy. Well, Reed leaves and goes somewhere. I forget where he went, and Bud elevates to number one. Well, this is this is after my second year of a grad assistant where I was making like 3600 bucks, And I just moved up to full-time assistant making 21000 22000 well, I bought a new Ford Explorer, and the uh, and the the payment on that was four hundred six eighty four a month. Well... Bud moves to head video. I'm going to possibly move to the second video. Well, that's only going to pay 10 grand. Well, 406.84 a month ain't going to get covered out of 10 grand, right? Exactly. So like in my mind, I'm going, I can't do this. Well, unbeknownst to me, they, they win the world title either that or then. Yeah, the world title either that year or the following year. And, and I think the bonuses alone just for the assistant video guy were like 75 grand. You know, but just obviously everything works out for a reason. I'm blessed to be where I am. But yes. at that point in my life, that probably wasn't a, a wise decision. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, when you, you start at the bottom and you get to know guys when, you know, none of us have anything, right? Exactly. Like we just talk hoops and we just draw on pads and stuff like that. that that's, that's where I, I first got to know him. And to watch his progression in, in the, you know, his progression in the business has, has been unbelievable. But the best thing about him is he's never changed. He's the same guy. You know, oh, we yes. played, uh, we were at, we were, I was at Purdue and we're playing at um, Marquette, I want to say two years ago. And he comes over, you know, to the game and, you know, I'm, I'm standing on the sideline and somebody's tapping me on the shoulder and I'm like, 
oh man, I, you know, he's at our game and he's, you know, Hey, let's go get dinner. If you got time and those sorts of things after which we didn't, but he's the same guy. And, and, you know, obviously he's, he's doing well and he's got a good team there in Milwaukee. Well, Coach, thank you for your time, Blake. Coach, we're going to do this again real soon. Come on here to the Peace Jam or Lake Point. Let me know, Coach. We will we, we, we grab some food and spot when you come to town, Coach, for sure, man. No questions. I, I Man, my mouth's watering a little bit. I'm hungry. It's, it's 1230 here right now, so I'm yeah. kind of hungry. <laughs> yes, it but is. no, absolutely. And, and I'll, anytime you want me uh, or need me to come back on, I'm, I'm always willing to help. Will do, Coach. Thanks so much for your time, buddy. All right, man. Have a great weekend. You too now.